we were discussing enhancing the gain of uh, common source amplifiers and the way we did it was by using an active load We took the example of a PMOS common source amplifier and if you have a resistor the problem is that the larger the resistor the larger the DC voltage drop across it. That is the key difference between having a resistive load and having an active load. Okay. The DC voltage drop across the active load is only related to VGN. It should be at least VGN minus VT, otherwise the transistor would not be in saturation region, but uh, the small signal resistance between this point and ground is unrelated to how much voltage is there. Okay? Whereas, here the I mean the small signal and large signal resistances are exactly the same. So, if you do have a large resistance, you will have a large voltage drop across it okay? and graphically If I call this V O and this current I O and correspondingly here, okay, for a resistor characteristic will be a straight line okay, with the slope of uh, slope inversely proportional to R L inverse uh, as the reciprocal of R L. Okay. Now, what happens is like you imagine a given current value it will have a certain voltage drop. Okay. If you increase the resistance, you make this curve shallower and you will end up with a larger voltage drop. You need a larger voltage across the device. So, essentially what we need is the slope corresponding to a very shallow line, but without a voltage drop. So, what we want is something like this. The slope is very, very small, but it should intersect somewhere here. And this will be nonlinear because this is not going to pass through the origin if it continued as a straight line. Okay, so an example, a possibility is to use a MOS transistor which has a very small slope here. It is nonlinear here. Okay, the slope here is very high, but you don't operate there; you operate over there. Okay, so that's why with a very small voltage across the device, you get a very high small signal resistance. Okay, so small signal resistance is not related to the V by I the total V by total I of the device. Okay. And we saw that it gives a much higher slope compared to a resistive load. If you vary the input from uh, 0 to V D D, what happened was because we are using a common source PMOS common source amplifier in the range V D D minus V T P to V D D, it will be off okay. and then the slope will increase and at some point the common source amplifier will uh, go into triode region and the slope will decrease again and when the input is 0, the output will be a little less than V D D. Okay. It must be pretty easy to convince yourself that when V G P is 0, this transistor will be on. So, some current is flowing. So, that means that this cannot be V D D okay? because you cannot have 0 voltage across the MOS transistor and have some current flowing. So, there will be some drop across the resistor across the uh, transistor. Okay? Is this fine? So, this characteristic this corresponds to first of all PMOS common source amplifier and NMOS active load and the slope of course, is continuously changing, but it will be what will be the slope? What will be the slope of that characteristic at any point? Huh? 
Yeah, how much is that? I mean, in terms of small signal parameters of the transistors, what will it be? Huh? Yeah, what is R here? Yeah, what is that? Huh? All right, I mean, there are two transistors, right? So, tell me. Which, which is the transistor we are referring to? Just call the small signal parameters of this GMP, GDSP or RDSP whatever you want and this is GMN, GDSN. So, what will be the expression for the slope of this one? GMP by GDSN. What happened to GDSP? What will be the slope in terms of the small signal parameters? do not worry about the how much the small signal parameters are, but uh, it is just denoted by GMP, GDSP, GMN, GDSN. What is the slope of this? GMP by? Yeah, GMP by GDSP plus GDSN, you have both, right? The slope will be GMP by GDSP plus GDSN, okay? So, somewhere this is M p is cut off and here M p is in saturation region and here M p is in triode region. Okay. Now, I started the story with using a PMOS common source amplifier with a resistive load and replaced the resistor with an NMOS transistor. Okay. I could equally well have started with an NMOS common source amplifier with a resistive load and replaced the resistor with a PMOS active load. Okay. The circuit will be exactly the same. Okay. All I have to do is think of VGN as the input and VGP as a fixed bias. So, if I draw the characteristics of V naught versus VGN, what will it look like? Hmm? Same, exactly the same. Really? Please draw it. V naught versus VGN. I think of VGN as the input in the circuit and VGP as a fixed bias. Okay, that will be an NMOS common source amplifier with a PMOS active load. So, what will be the characteristics? Yeah, yeah, there will be some differences. Okay. What will be the output for uh, VGN equals 0? 0. Why? Yeah, so what will be the output? VDD, it will be exactly equal to VDD. And if I for small values of VGN, constant okay when will it start deviating from vdd vdn yeah so from 0 to vtn the output will be at vdd because the nmos transistor is cut off and of course it's assumed that vgp is such that the pmos transistor is on okay we have zero current and the transistor is on that is the v, v s g is more than the threshold voltage then the only way for uh, zero current to be flowing is to have v s d to be zero. Okay. So, the output will go all the way to v d d and then what happens? What happens after that? What will the shape look like? Hmm? I know. So, what will happen to the output voltage? It will fall. Okay. So, it will fall and it will start falling 
and at some point if you increase Vgn to very large values Mn will go into triode region and you the slope will again reduce. Okay. What will be the output voltage for uh, Vgn equals Vdd? What will it be? When Vgn equals Vdd, what will be the output voltage? What region will the transistors be in? Excuse me. What region will the transistors be? Which one will be in triode? Top one will be in triode. Why? Really? I said when VGN equals VDD, which one, which transistor will be in triode, where will the other transistor be? MN will be in triode and MP will be very much in saturation region. Okay. So, the output will become small, it depends on the sizing. I mean, the way I wrote it, it goes close to, uh, it will go close to 0, but it does not have to be. So, it will do that. It will be exactly the counterpart of this, right. So, it will do something like that. So, in this here M n is cut off, here M n is in saturation region and here M n will be in triode region. Okay. So, the output can go to very small values, but never 0, because there will be some current flowing in the MOS transistor. And that means that there has to be some voltage across the MOS transistor. Okay. Yeah, let's say I mean we can start with uh, their size such that their mu C ox W L products are the same. Okay, that's a convenient assumption. It doesn't have to be okay because I can always uh, generate some. Uh, I mean I can always size them such that the characteristics probably does something like that, okay. but it is not very useful for our purposes, so I am not considering those things. That is fine. Now, we treated it as a circuit with a PMOS common source amplifier with NMOS active load or NMOS common source amplifier with PMOS active load. Okay, but we could potentially connect the inputs to both, right? Isn't it? I could do that also. For instance, I mean there are many ways of doing it. I will use the simplest case. I didn't show any biasing picture and so on, but potentially I could do this. I bias this at V bias n, and AC couple the signal V i, and sorry this is V bias p and I bias this at V bias n okay. and again AC couple it, AC couple the input signal V i to the gate. Okay. Assuming that both transistors are in saturation, okay. please find the small signal gain of this. What will be the small signal gain of the circuit? Capacitors are shorts. So we have V i applied to the gate of the NMOS transistor and the source is grounded. So, we have G m n times V i and it also has an output conductance G d s n okay. and the same V i is also connected to the gate of the PMOS transistor and its source is grounded small signal wise. It is connected to V d d. Okay. What is the value of the small signal current source? G m p V i and across it you have G d s p and the drain of NMOS and PMOS are connected together. 
So, all we have is just PMOS and NMOS common source amplifiers in parallel with each other that is all ok. So, the total current from the control sources is GMP plus GMN times V i and that flows into a total conductance of GDSP plus GDSN. So, V naught by V i is obviously minus GMP plus GMN by GDSP plus GDSN ok. So, if we had only PMOS amplifier this would be the case this would be the only term in the numerator and if you had only NMOS amplifier that would be the only term. So, this looks like a cheapo way of increasing the gain because we already had two transistors anyway. So, one possibility is apply input signals to both of them instead of only one ok. So, in the other cases we were treating one of them as the common source amplifier and the other one as a dumb current source right. So, instead of that you could actually apply if I remove this for instance if I only bias this one then this is a current source that is a common source amplifier. So, this is a load for that ok and similarly if I remove the if I apply input signal only to NMOS we have only common source NMOS common source amplifier. Now, we have both ok and you will get a higher gain and it is advantageous in some cases right. Now, in this also the simplest realization. So, it is used like this you bias the for instance you could bias each of these from a current mirror and so on and you can connect the signals, but the simplest realization which I would say is not so much used in analog circuits, but a very useful circuit anyway is to make the two bias voltages equal and equal to the large signal input voltage ok. So, I just connect the gates of uh, NMOS and PMOS together and apply the same input to both. This will obviously follow what we had earlier that uh, uh, the same input is connected to the gate of PMOS and NMOS ok. Only thing is we do not know what the bias values are that we can find out quite easily I would not do that now, but what I want is now for you to draw V naught versus V i characteristic of this ok of this one and when you draw it draw it on the same set of axis as these or at least try to make it kind of logically comparable to this ok. So, any qualitative difference between that and these curves should be uh, shown properly on the graph ok. For V i equal to 0 what region is M p in sorry I should this is M n this is M p for V i equal to 0 what is the what region is M n in cut off and M p saturation huh? what will be the output voltage if uh, V i equal to 0 V d d ok. So, what will be what region is M p in Triode region ok. So, when V i equals 0 in fact for values of V i between 0 and V t n ok this transistor is off. So, no current flows through here and we assume that V d d is large enough for this to be on ok. V d d is more than V t p plus V t n let us assume that. Then because there is no current flowing this voltage has to reach V d d and M p will be in deep triode region ok. So, characteristics follows basically what the case was for the NMOS amplifier and similarly at the other end for uh, V i between V d d and V d d minus V t p M p will be off. So, M n will have 0 voltage across it and in deep triode region. So, that part of the characteristic corresponds to the PMOS common source amplifier ok. Now, let us say V i is slightly more than uh, V t n ok. What regions will the transistors be in? V i is slightly more than V t n. What region will M n be in? What region will M p be in? What region will M n be? Saturation. Why? No, voltage, voltage is more than V t. If the voltage is more than V t, it could be either in uh, saturation or triode. 
but how do you tell if it is in saturation or dry out? Huh? Drain voltage is very close to VDD now, it will be slightly below VDD because current starts flowing. So, this voltage has to be slightly different from VDD for current to be flowing through PMOS, but this is only slightly more than VT and the drain voltage is quite large. So, NMOS will be in saturation region, PMOS will still be in triode region. Okay. So, there will be some decrease in the output voltage and after a certain point what happens is that PMOS also comes into saturation region and NMOS will be in saturation region. That is where the slope will be the highest okay. and then what happens? As V i increases V naught will fall, NMOS will go into triode region and PMOS will be in saturation region because NMOS goes into triode region its output conductance goes up and the slope again reduces and when it reaches V d d minus V t p this current goes off to 0 and the output will fall to 0. Okay and the slope everywhere this is the expression for the slope everywhere, but the slope will be highest in this middle region when both transistors are in saturation. Okay. Is this fine? So, that is what the characteristic will look like and unlike the other one the PMOS amplifier case the output went all the way down to 0, but never all the way up to VDD. For the NMOS case the output went all the way up to VDD, but never all the way down to 0, whereas here it reaches VDD as well as 0 exactly. right? So, this circuit are you familiar with this? Have you seen this or what is the circuit you know which has this characteristics V naught versus V i to be like that? What is that? Inverter, a logical inverter that is exactly what it does. right? Okay. So, if you I mean if you denote logic 0 by 0 volts or something low voltage and logic 1 by voltage is close to V d d okay? then this is a logical inverter. If you apply voltage is close to 0 you will get something close to V d d and if you apply voltage is close to V d d you will get something close to 0. Okay? Is this fine? Well, significant meaning yeah we can calculate right. So, there will be for what is the condition for uh, M n to be in saturation? V i less than or rather V naught greater than V i minus V t n and is not it for the PMOS? V naught less than I mean it is easier to just compare drain and gate voltages right. What is the condition for uh, V i plus V t p that is all V i plus V t p. Okay. So, there I mean that is the reason. Okay. So, if I draw V naught equals V i on the same axis what will I get? On this axis here if I draw V naught equals V i what is it that I am going to get? I just want to draw V naught equals V i curve on this straight line 45 degrees that is all. Okay. If I draw V naught equals V i minus V t n shift which way right or left? right this is V i plus V t n and V i V i minus V t n sorry V i minus V t n and if I draw V i plus V t p it will be shifted up okay. V i plus V t p. So, anything between those regions it is in uh, both are in saturation right. Yeah. gate and no ah yeah okay that's a good question so so what so the question is the following so let's say we assume our uh, initial model of mos transistors where uh, drain current is a function of only the gate source voltage for nmos and source gate voltage for pmos okay 
obviously i mean if you just look at the circuit the drain current of nmos and pmos have to be exactly the same right because of the connection so it appears that there is only one current value for which this can happen right and that is correct but what is the contradiction or what is the problem what will the characteristics look like in that case this v not versus vi characteristic what will it look like if you assume that uh, if you draw basically assume lambda n and lambda p are both zero okay what will the characteristic look like yeah so what happens is that this slope will be infinite right so there is only one value of current for which i mean uh, saturation current of this and that will be the same for one particular value of vi okay and if i if you do the try to do the graphical construction for this the nmos characteristics will be like that okay for a certain value of vi sorry this is i not versus v not the nmos will be like that and for the same value of uh, vi the pmos will be something like this okay as you go on increasing the value of uh, vi you will get this and maybe for a particular value of vi these two will be coincident okay and a small change from there will make it go to make one of the transistors go to triode region okay and that's the, i mean that's basically the large signal interpretation of the small signal gain being infinite right so you are basically talking about a case where gdsn and gdsp are both zero so that's why a part of this uh, characteristic has to be vertical so the slope will be infinite so i didn't draw this to scale properly so the regions will really be like that and that the region in the middle will just be that vertical part if uh, we don't have non zero lambdas okay is this fine so there is a, first of all a region where the uh, slope is very large both transistors are in saturation and that's where we want to use it in fact we uh, came to this by trying to enhance the gain of amplifiers and so on okay but i mean we were trying to make amplifiers and we ended up with an inverter is there any connection here is it just happenstance what is the relationship between amplifiers and digital gates hmm? is there any or i mean it's just that okay we stumble upon something and that's all that's there to it what is the characteristic of a digital gate why are digital circuits so popular Hmm? Yeah, binary values. So it's easy to count, but beyond that, <laughs> store. Okay, but uh, I mean, you must have heard some uh, advertising claim for digital circuits when you did digital circuits course, right? What is that? Huh? What's good about digital stuff? Huh? What's that? Why? Yeah. So, what is easier? I mean, I know it is binary valued. So, what is so easy if it is binary valued? Ah, uh, what's that? No, no, that's not. The finding? Finding errors is it's something related to errors and so on. But what is it? What's that? Ambiguity. Ah, exactly. There is no ambiguity or very little ambiguity, and you have only two. If you have a continuous set of values, you have to find out exactly how much it is. Maybe 3.141 so many volts. Whereas here, you only have to distinguish between logic high and logic low. And you must have used digital gates in the past semester. You would have also done the lab, right? Uh, there, of course, you would nominally there is some uh, voltage. assign to some logic levels so maybe zero is logic zero volts is logic zero and five volts is logic one okay but does it have to be do the logic levels have to be exactly zero volts and five volts that is the whole point right i mean they can deviate from there and you will still interpret them as logic one and zero provided they are beyond a certain value okay is that right so what is the characteristic of the logic circuit that uh, tells you something about this like how far off can you be from 5 volts for you to still interpret it as logic 1 and how far off from 0 should you 
have it so that it is still interpreted as logic 0 and so on. There are some uh, parameters of digital gates right, what are there? Yeah, I mean there are some terms that uh, come to my mind, what are they? Huh? VOH, VOL, those uh, terms ring a bell or no? VOL, very a low volume bell. <laughs> Yeah, what is that? What is VIH? I mean, what is it? Is VIH equal to 5 volts? What is it? What does it mean? What is the what is the meaning of VIH? I mean, it is specified for logic gates if you have seen the data sheet. So, what is VIH? No, no, it is nothing to do with the output. Yeah. So, the minimum, so if you have a gate with a certain VIH, it means that for any voltage above VIH, the, the gate will interpret it as logic 0 and the logical function will cor function correctly. Okay. So, obviously, if you have 5 volts as uh, logic 1 and 0 volts as logic 0 and you give it 2.5 volts, what is it going to interpret it as? It has to be skewed at least to one side. It may not be all the way to 5 volts or all the way to 0, but it may have to be let us say 3 volts and above for logic 1 and 2 volts and below for logic 0. Okay, and similarly, every gate will have so VIL is a similar thing. I mean, below VIL, it will interpret it as logic zero. VIL is not exactly zero. Maybe it is two volts. Let's say so. Every anything between two zero and two volts is logic zero, and anything between uh, three and five volts is logic one. That's a possibility, right? The exact values may be different. That depends on the construction of the gate. What are VOH and VOL? Output voltage, but yeah. Huh? No, it is something that the logic gives. What is that? Uh, ah, exactly. So the logic, the gate construction of the gate guarantees that. So let's say you have some complicated function block, okay? And it's the logical output is one, but what is the voltage output? It's not always. It's not guaranteed to be five volts, okay? But it's guaranteed to be above this VOH. Right, and similarly, if uh, the output of uh, some logical function block is uh, logic zero, then the output is guaranteed to be below VOL. Okay, so there is some nominal voltage. It is never going to be equal to the nominal voltage because if you constrain the uh, voltages to be exactly equal to the nominal voltages, all the advantages are lost. The whole point is this, uh, and this range can be pretty broad. Like I said, anything between three and uh, five volts, you could interpret as logic one and so on. Okay. So, VOH and VOL are uh, output values guaranteed for logic 1 and logic 0. Okay. Now, what is the relationship between VOH and VOL and VOH and VOL? Is there any relationship that you can make? I mean, I just logically thinking about it for uh, let us say you even have a chain of inverters for the whole scheme to work for this whole uh, low ambiguity scheme to work out. What relationship do you think must hold? Yeah, exactly, right? I mean, because you have to drive following logic with it, and VOH should be, VOH should be such that any, uh, I mean, at least from the same family of gates, you take another uh, gate and put it VOH into it, it, that should interpret it as logic high in the first place, okay? Or I will kind of say that the spacing between VOH and VOL and VIH and VIL, this should be greater than 1, right? The outputs, so there is some distance between logic 0 and 1 that should be greater at the output than at the input and of course, each one should also be compatible and what is this, what is this quantity here? Ratio of output voltage to some difference in output voltage to input voltage is basically like a gain, it is some very crude version of the gain. So, the point is you have to have an amplifier in order to make a logic gate. Okay. So, it is not just by stumbling, stumbling across some circuit and then hey, I recognize this to be an inverter, it is not like that. Okay. It may not be exactly this circuit. Whatever circuit you make, you need an amplifier to make a logic gate. Otherwise, this whole level restoring business does not work. The reason you can tolerate the ambiguity is the following. So, let us say some particular logic gate gives you 4 volts instead of 5 volts. The following one will still interpret it as logic 1 and that will after a chain of uh, such logical operations, it will go closer to the nominal values of 0 and 5. Okay. So, that, that is the reason for low ambiguity of 
uh, very little ambiguity of digital circuits, noise immunity and all these things, okay. And that implicitly means that you have to have an amplifier in order to make digital circuits. So, basically analog before digital that is the advertisement pitch I wanted to make, okay. So, you need to have uh, amplifier circuits to make digital ones. That is why I mean in any technology first you try to make an amplifier. If you make an amplifier the gain could be 1.001. In principle you could make digital logic with it okay by putting a thousand of them together you can get a substantial gain. But uh, if you have gain of 0.999 you will not have this level restoring logic and none of the good stuff that you have with digital circuits okay. And this particular circuit it is known as a CMOS inverter C stands for complementary it means that a CMOS process means that both PMOS and NMOS are available okay. And of course, we are talking about CMOS process with positive threshold voltages for P and N okay. The reason for it is the following what is the current flowing through the circuit the CMOS inverter circuit when V i equals 0 what is the current 0 and when V i is high also 0 okay. So, if you make logic circuits like this, this is a not gate, but every logical gate can be made by following a similar principle. You will have a p part and n, n part, okay. The point is in static conditions that is when the output is stuck to uh, like output is uh, holding some logic value, okay. The current through the circuit is 0, right. So, when uh, the input is either 1 or 0, again it does not have to be exactly 1. I mean even you even have a range, right. You have some uh, threshold. Uh, voltage and if the input is logic 0 somewhere here the current is 0 input is logic 1 current is 0. So, if the once the logical circuit goes and settles to some logic state the current through the whole circuit will be 0. So, this uh, settling to state it is called steady state or uh, static power dissipation. The static power dissipation of CMOS logic circuits is 0 okay. That is why this has become the most popular form of uh, logic okay. I do not know what kind of gates you use it is uh, TTL gates or something. So, those things have a lot of power consumption usually at least on one side okay. Even if the input is simply held at logic 1 it will be drawing current and simply held at logic 0 it will be drawing current whereas, this one does not do that okay. If the only when the inputs are changing when it is traversing from here to there yeah it will draw some current and there will be some power dissipation uh, there is that is known as dynamic power dissipation only when things are changing and there is dynamic power dissipation not only because of this and some other things, but statically there is no power dissipation and that is why the CMOS has become the most dominant uh, that is one of the reasons why it is the most dominant uh, logical uh, I mean digital technology today okay. CMOS no TTL first of all it is made using bipolar transistors they are dinosaurs they are gone okay. <laughs> now, I mean each gate consumes a lot of power. So, this one is uh, I mean you and also it turned out that uh, I sometimes it is hard to tell what is the cause and what is the effect, but as CMOS became more popular more effort was put into it. You can shrink CMOS circuits the actual uh, TTL inverter it looks lot more complicated there are a lot more uh, transistors and physically the area of that is much bigger than CMOS okay. The CMOS can be shrunk a lot more. So, that is why you know you now have billion transistor circuits such a thing would simply not be possible in bipolar. And even if you are able to shrink the transistor using those logic families which are consuming static current you will not be you will not have a viable power dissipation for the chip okay. No, this is used as it is even today okay. The only caveat is that the current is not exactly 0 when you the input is below the threshold voltage okay. So, there will be some leakage current and as the transistors have become smaller and smaller that leakage current is becoming more and more important. Otherwise, uh, this is the circuit that is used everywhere okay. There is some uh, uh, sophistication you build around this, but this circuit itself is like this okay. Now, of course, our interest is to not use it as a logic gate okay. In fact, the two are complementary right the amplifiers and logic gates. In an amplifier when the input changes a little bit the output should change by substantially. In a logic gate it is the opposite if the input is held at a some logic level, but it changes a little bit the output should not change at all it should not respond to such small changes that is the reason for noise immunity. So, logic gate is operated here and the amplifier is operated there okay. But you need an amplifier to make a logic gate, but of course, you do not operate it where the slope is high you operate it where the slope is low obviously okay. So, 
So, now the question is let us take this particular circuit. I mean so far I have been applying V i here, but let us say I want uh, I have a small signal source which is grounded and I want to bias this circuit such that it behaves like an amplifier. What should I do? I mean for a single common source amplifier we knew we had constant voltage bias and all kinds of things. Okay. Let me take this CMOS inverter circuit. and I have my signal input V i. Okay. Now, I want to apply this V i to the gates of both transistors and get my large gain which is G m p plus G m n by G d s p plus G d s n. Now, for that to happen for that gain to be large I have various regions, but I have to operate in a region where both transistors are in saturation. So, how would I arrange for the bias of this? So, that both transistors are in saturation. What should I do? V d by 2. Okay. Will it work? So, what I think he is suggesting is I have V d d by 2, which is basically is like putting a voltage divider from V d d and do this. Okay. Will this work? So, if the characteristics are exactly symmetric, this will work this may work. What happens if uh, the characteristics are not exactly symmetric? What would happen to I naught versus sorry V naught versus V i? So, you could have different kinds of skews, but I mean you could also have some things like this. Okay. This can easily happen the threshold voltage can vary quite a bit several tens of millivolts to even 100 millivolts or so. Okay. So, this kind of thing can happen. So, if you do bias it, if you try to bias it here at V d by 2, for this particular case it may be all right, but for this it is here where the gain is very small for the other one it is there where the gain is also very small. Okay. So, we cannot really use that we cannot bias the input at a fixed voltage. This is similar to but a more extreme case of the common source amplifier right in there that case also we could have biased it at a constant input voltage or constant VGS, but we said that that makes it kind of sensitive to the transistor variations and here it is even more sensitive there the gain will change a little bit here you could get instead of very high gain a very low gain. Okay. So, what is the strategy? Huh? What is that? I heard the right word whatever whoever said it say it again. <laughs> feedback yeah feedback is the only way okay. and in general this is always true when you have a very high gain by definition very high gain means that small change in the input gives you a large change in the output. So, you cannot fix the output by fixing the input. Okay. So, when you have a very high gain that by definition means something very sensitive. So, you cannot fix the output by fixing the input you actually have to monitor what the output is compare it to the desired value and control the input such that the output goes to the right value. Okay. So, please find out how I could bias it I mean some simple circuit around this. So, that I am in this region regardless of the characteristics it has to finally, go and settle in that region. Okay. Now, obviously, you have to bring the output voltage V naught into play. right? So, first it is easier if you if let me call this upper case V i. You figure out V i as a function of V naught some guess or something that you do such that it is guaranteed to be in saturation region. After that you will come up with the circuit very easily. Okay or alternatively you can do I mean you can vary V i see which direction V naught varies and do all the negative feedback stuff. Okay. 